Erev Tov Rabotai, we're continuing with our Mishnah Imi Mesechet Demai. We're up to Perek Bet Mishnah Gimel. In the previous Mishnah, we discussed what a person needs to do in order to receive a title of a person that's believed, Ne'eman for Ma'asrot, that when he says he removed the tides, he's believed. The Mishnah now is going to continue on that subject, but discussing an upgrade. A person wants to be Ne'eman regarding Tuman Tara, which is an even higher level of belief. That's called a chaver. Literally, the Rambam says a chaver is, a, is it means a friend. It's referring to a Torah scholar because Torah scholars with each other they share fellow friendship because service of Hashem. So they apply this word of chaver to people that want to get the status of being believed by Tuman Tara because generally it was saved for Tamdei Chachamim. Ordinary people they usually weren't a holding in these laws. They're very complex. Therefore, we gave the title, a tamid, we gave the name Chavel, which usually refers to a Tamid Chacham. Now, if a person wants to be upgraded as a Chavel, that he has the status, he's believed by Tuman Tara, there's a, another list of requirements he has to keep. Now, just as a background, we know that the basic requirement to become a Chavel is a person has to commit to eat Chulin, even non-sacred fru- f- foods, only these tarot in purity, even though it's not required by Torah law. A person only has to eat um, kochim, holy foods, while he's pure. However, chulin, random foods, uh, non-sanctified foods, he doesn't have to eat in purity, he can eat in chulin. However, if he wants to become a chaver believed by Tuman Tara, he has to make sure, accept upon himself one of the things, that he's going to eat all his food in purity. Now, the first set of rules, just to explain, it's going to pertain to the Tumah foods. Foods we know... They do not become Tameh unless they were first prepared hukshav, for Tuma by one of the seven liquids that we're going to speak about later on in Mesechet Machshirin. Once they become wet, even if they dry, now they become susceptible to Tuma when they were touched by something or someone that is Tameh. So the Mishnah says, a person who accepts upon himself to become a chaver, which the Rav explains, if we read in the Rav, regarding purity, that his clothing and his liquids always have the status of being pure. Even a Torah scholar, he's not believed to say something is pure, uh, unless he goes through this um, acceptance of becoming a chaver. Unless he is an outstanding scholar that always learns in the yeshiva. Even after accepting upon yourself in front of the three people, the um, requirements of becoming a chaver, you still have a 30-day trial period to make sure that you are following the rules that you accept. And afterwards, your clothing and your liquids will always have the status of, poor, um, of pure when you say so. Now the Mishnah says, "Amikabel alav liot chaver." Someone who accepts upon himself to become a chaver, believed by uh, by Tuman Tara, he makes his commitment. The Mishnah says, "Mocher la maaretz lach liavish." Eno mocher la maaretz. I'm sorry. Amikabel alav liot chaver. Eno mocher la maaretz lach liavish. He's not allowed to sell any food to an amaaretz, whether it's wet or dry, because again, the same reason. An amaaretz, we know the rabbis gave him the status of tamed because he doesn't know the complicated laws. Therefore, we cannot sell him any food, even wet or dry, because he's going to make the food tamed by touching it, and it's forbidden, according to this opinion, to cause food from Eretz Yisrael to become impure, even if it's chulin. So, one of the requirements that you have to accept is never to sell food to an amaaretz, whether it's wet or dry, because we don't want it to become impure, since that's a soul, according to this opinion, to make food um, impure in Eretz Yisrael. Likewise, you have to accept upon yourself not to buy from an amaaretz food that was once wet, because we have to assume that the amaaretz made it impure, since he has the general status of impurity, and one of the requirements was a chaver, is to accept upon himself never to eat tamer food, even if it's chulin. Therefore, he cannot buy from, from an Amaaretz because even if the Amaaretz says it's not Tameh, we're not going to trust him since he's not, he's not an expert in the laws of Tuman Tara. If the Amaaretz says that it was dry, it was, if it's dry and the Amaaretz says it was never wet, then he's believed. But if he says it was wet, but I made sure it never became impure, that we don't believe him since he doesn't know the complicated laws. Then he must not be a guest in the house of an Amaaretz since he may end up becoming Tameh. There. Not even the problem like previously when we said, um, in the previous Mishnah, if you want to be believed by Tuman Masa, you cannot go to an Amalat's house, we said, because you might eat their Demai food. 
Here it's you can't even go to his house because since he is impure, that means likely his possessions are impure in his house, which will make this chabel, this person, become impure. If he wants to be truly trustworthy, he cannot even go to the Amalat's his house. Nor may he have the Amalat come to his house, be a guest in his house, when the Amalat is wearing his own clothing, because since the Amalat is clothing, most, we most probably say he's impure. If this host is going to touch him, he's going to become impure. In any of these cases, basically we're concerned that you're going to become Tamil without realizing it, and then touch food, and then make it Tamil, and, and you are going against your acceptance. However, if the Amalat comes to your house and you give him clothing that you know are pure, that is allowed to be in your house already because the Rav says it's easier to avoid touching the um, Amalat's body than touching his clothing. Now, Rabbi Yehuda adds more requirements. Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda says, you have to accept upon yourself not to raise any small domestic animals in Eretz Israel, which are sheep and goats, because the Metalshim explain that they usually wander off and eat other people, they graze other people's grass, other people's fields. Chachamim prohibited raising because these such animals because of stealing. He cannot be a person that freely makes vows or acts lightheadedness because if you make vows or act lightheadedness, it leads to sins, it leads to immorality. You should not allow yourself to become impure by contact of the dead. Obviously, it's not talking about if you have a funeral, but it means just randomly because the Rebuda holds that obtaining the paraduma, the red heifer's ashes, in order to purify yourself from the impurity of, of the dead, it's, it's, it's difficult. Therefore, he has to accept upon himself never to become impure. He has to serve, which means study under Tamdei Chachamim and the Beit HaMidrash. Amrulo, but the sages responded to Rabbi Yehuda, Lo bau elu laklal. These things have nothing to do with Tumat. They're very nice levels to obtain, but it has nothing to do with um, accepting upon yourself the qualifications of Tumat. Therefore, he can be a chaber even if he doesn't accept upon himself these conditions. Now, the Metoshim explain that according to the Chachamim, you're right that it's difficult to in, uh, clean the impurity of Tumat Med from a person, or the Chachamim say, in the times of the Mishnah, it was it was available. If a person wanted it, could, it was available. It wasn't that difficult. Therefore, he doesn't have to follow that restriction. And again, according to Rabbi Yudah, only somebody who has despised lifestyle can become a Chaber, but uh, according to Chachamim, it's not required, and the Alakha does not follow Rabbi Yudah. That is the end of Mishnah Gimel. Now Rabbi Mishnah Dawah discusses uh, as an introduction, a person is not allowed to sell produce without removing the tumah myself because again, we don't. You're going to cause a person to, God forbid, eat tevel. According to the chachamim, really based based on the Torah, it should have been the person's obligation whoever bought it. But the sage just said before you uh, sell the produce, you have to make sure you remove tumah and ma'asel in order to ensure that the person doesn't end up eating the food without taking off the tides. However, regarding demai, that's not always the case. In certain cases, the chachamim were lenient that the seller could sell the produce of demai that he bought from Namaritz without removing the tides, and that'll be the buyer's obligation to remove them. The Mishnah now is going to discuss when is it the buyer's obligation and when is it the seller's obligation. Hanachtomim lo chivuotam chachamim nafrish ele kedet tumat ma'asel v'chala. Commercial bakers, who the Rav explains that they're chaverim, they're trusted regarding ma'asrot, but they bought their grain from ame'aratzot. Now, they're required by the chachamim only to separate the tumat ma'asr, which is one one hundredth, and chalal, which is one forty eighth. However, since they make a very small profit, the chachamim did not burden them to separate the ma'asr sheni and have to take it to Ushanaim and eat it there. Therefore, they did not require them to, se- to separate it. They say you could, all you have to do is separate the chalal and tumat ma'asel and leave it upon the buyer to separate the ma'asel sheni and eating the rushalayim since they're not making that much money anyways. If they're going to sell it to an amaritz, then they have to separate ma'asel sheni because most probably he won't do it. But if you're selling it to an average person, you don't have to separate ma'asel sheni. Now, the Mishnah continues, However, regarding retail shoppers who make a lot of profits since they only sell little at a time, or the Rav says, because they generally sell to children. And they're not allowed to sell demai without separating it. Because again, including Masel Shini, since they make a large profit, Chachamim say you have to go and separate the Masel Shini in Yerushalayim. Or the Rav explains, since they sold to children, who most probably wouldn't separate, you have to separate before they eat it. The Mishnah says, all those who sell with a large measure, meaning they sell large quantities at once, they make less money, they're permitted to sell demai without tithing it, because again, their profit is not so much. And the Mishnah ends off, Elu hen amashpin bimida gasa. What are those people that sell with a large measure? What qualifies them that they're selling in a large measure and therefore they don't have to separate certain ma'asels? 
כגון הסיטונות ומוחי תבואה. For example, there are wholesalers and grain sellers who sell, not only they sell large, uh, large scale wholesalers like סיטונות, who buy grain from farmers and sell it to shopkeepers, but even private grain sellers who sell in bulk, they can also sell without separating the demai, because again, since they're not making that much money, Chachamim did not burden them to separate the Maaser Shani or whatever um, separations c- concerns them. That is the end of today's Mishnah. Amen.